out of obscurity, Jesus comes to save the world. The Just Jesus Evangelistic Campaign, Day 49, slash day 416 since January the 1st, 2016. Please turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 2, verse 19, and please stand for the reading of God's holy word, if you can. But when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeareth in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise and take uh, the young child. And by the way, I believe that these dreams that we hear about, these visions, are extremely, or were extremely vivid. I don't think these are the kind of dreams that you and I have every now and then when we eat too much pizza on Wednesday night. I believe that these uh, these dreams are way more than the dreams that we experience from time to time. I don't know this to be a fact, but I believe that these dreams are kind of like a person standing right there in front of you. They are 3D, and, and these are not dreams that you forget the next day. I asked somebody the other day, did you have any dreams uh, last night? And she said, yes. And I said, well, what, was, what was the dream about? I can't remember. But we're not talking about that kind of dream. And these folks never forgot these dreams. Verse 20, saying, arise and take the young child and his mother and go into the land of Israel for they are dead which sought the young child's life. And he arose and took the young child and his mother and came into the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus did reign in Judea in the room of his father Herod, and by the way, Thank God uh, this Mary is not like, was not like my Mary. Uh, my Mary, spelled with M-E-R-I, she would have rolled back her eyeballs and rolled her eyes and said, oh, here we go again. You and your dream, here we got to get on the donkey again and go back. Uh, you know, women, most women don't like to uh, move again and uh and uh my uh mary certainly does not she would have been uh chirping and and talking and and cussing me out all the way back to jerusalem or wherever we was headed but thank god for this mary uh, we don't hear a mumbling word from this mary whatever the lord has said to you husband i follow Oh, what a blessing to have a wife like Mary, mother of Jesus. Just obedient, submissive, doesn't put up a fuss and a fight, just gets on the donkey and goes back into uh, danger, if you will. But when he heard that Archelaus did reign in Judea in the room of his father Herod, he was afraid to go thither, notwithstanding being warned of God in a dream. He turned aside into the parts of Galilee. Uh, God was at work protecting his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophets he shall be called a Nazarene Jesus 
of Nazareth. Holy Father God, we praise you and we thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your love, and your grace. We thank you for uh, your Holy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the privilege it is to hear the story again. For it never gets old. It is indeed even uh, CNN has to acknowledge that it's the greatest story ever told. And we praise you and we thank you for this story. It still has uh, the power to transform a person's life to deliver them from sin and hell and usher them into heaven. We thank you for the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray that those of us who are here, you would strengthen us in the inner person, fill us with the power of your Holy Spirit and the fruit of your Holy Spirit, and help us to be a people who know how to resist the devil that he would flee from us that we would not listen to him, that we will listen to your holy word and do what is right. Uh, Lord, we know that the devil's been fighting all day because he does not want me to preach the gospel and preach your holy word. Please rebuke and bind the devil, his demons, and his hosts from this meeting tonight. Save that soul that is nearest to hell. Reclaim every backslidden Christian to yourself. And Lord, as you know, we, never, we have never given an invitation for people to uh, come back to you or to rededicate their life or uh, some call it something else. Uh, we, have, we never give that invitation. We give one invitation, and that is for salvation. And uh, we're amazed every day. Every week, how many people hear the gospel, hear the word of the Lord, and come back to you? They're already saved, and they let us know that they are rededicating their lives to you. And we rejoice with them, and we pray for them every day that they would stand strong in the faith. Now, Holy Father God, we pray that you would glorify your holy name and lift up your holy Son, Jesus Christ. For it is in his name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. We thank God for our two Periscope uh, audiences and our Facebook Live audience. We thank God for our Gospelite House of Prayer International audience, our Gospelite Society audience live, our Roku audience, our uh, Google TV audience, Google Chrome TV audience, our uh, Apple TV audience, our uh, uh, Spreaker audience, one of the largest of our audiences. And on and on we can go. We thank God for your presence. I don't say that much uh, because uh, I'm not like these annoying uh, Periscope people who sit there with a guitar on their lap and they struck a chord. Now, like me now. Give me some love. Let me see them flowers or birds or whatever they're flying over there. Get them going. And they, they hit another chord and then they talk to you some more. Oh, that's disgusting. Can you imagine my doing that? <laughs> Did I uh, preach that word to you good right there? That one word? Give me a like now. Fly some birds, some flowers or something, some hearts or whatever you got. That's ridiculous. I, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm just preaching the gospel, folks. And if you come on board, you come on board. If you like it, you like it. And if you don't, you don't. That's okay. Anyway, J.I. Packer said the Almighty appeared on earth as a helpless, and we say this advisedly, as a helpless human baby needing to, and we say this respectfully, needing to be fed and changed and taught to talk like any other child 
The more you think about it, the more staggering it gets. Nothing in fiction is so fantastic as this truth of the Incarnation. Amen, somebody. Beloved, after receiving a message from an angel of the Lord letting them know that the tyrant, uh, the terrorist, the monster Herod was dead, and Herod is probably in hell today. I hate to say it, but if he didn't believe in that baby that he was trying to kill, he's in hell today. If he didn't trust in the true king of kings, the true king of the Jews, Herod the monster is in hell today. And we don't rejoice in that because hell is an awful place. Joseph and Mary return to their home country with the child Jesus. However, while they were on their way, possibly back to Bethlehem, Joseph heard that Herod's son, Archelaus, had taken his father's place. Archelaus was just as cruel as his father had been and apparently had inherited his father's wicked paranoia, demonically driven paranoia about this new king of the Jews and about others as well. Despite his father's massacre, he probably was still on the lookout just to make sure that this particular child king had not somehow escaped. Uh, we don't know that to be sure. Because of this, Joseph was warned of God in a dream, and he took Mary and Jesus into Galilee instead of Judea. Understanding that you can't hide Jesus long for long. You just can't do it. Can't hide God for long. In Galilee, they settled in the city of Nazareth. Now, that word, that name of a city sounds rather cosmopolitan. Sounds, sounds just kind of wonderful. It sounds, it rolls off the tongue real good. We like it. Nazareth. Wow. Nazareth. Mary had been living in Nazareth when the angel Gabriel first visited her and told her that she would bear God's son. It was a small agricultural uh, based town at this time, home to about 500 people or more. A small town. In God's providence, Jesus' residence there fulfilled the prophecy that the Messiah would be called a Nazarene. And that's why today you have the Church of the Nazarene, because this was another name for Jesus. However, being called a Nazarene was not a positive thing in Jesus' day. Nazareth was in Galilee, and the Jews of Judea considered the Jews of Galilee to be second-class citizens. People in Galilee were not as well-to-do, and they did not keep the law as strictly as the uh, other Jews. For reasons not revealed in Scripture, being a Nazarene also carried an additional stigma for some reason. 
in John, and as you know, by the grace of God, I preached on every verse in John. What a wonderful time we had from January the 1st all the way into this year, preaching from the Gospel of John. John, one of Jesus' disciples, when he heard about Jesus of Nazareth, remarked, uh, this was before he became a disciple, remarked, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Had a bad reputation. There was probably one or two folks Nazarene standing at the gate of the city holding up a sign Nazarene lives matter they were trotted upon and talked about looked down upon in the divine orchestration of Jesus' childhood residence we see a principle that God demonstrates throughout the word of God, he takes the people and places that the world despises and that the world sees as useless, that the world sees as nothing, no account, and he uses them in a mighty way. And you see this really throughout history. He could have had his son born to a, at least in an, in an adopted Moses type fashion, to a Roman princess. But he chose a common young woman, a good, godly woman, named Mary from Galilee. He could have had his son raised in the religious and political center of Jerusalem being taught by the greatest teachers of that time. But he chose the obscure and stigmatized the town of Nazareth, for he will be called a Nazarene. Oftentimes the Bible refers to him as Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus could have chosen the learned men, the rich men, the important men of his day as his disciples, but he chose ordinary fishermen and a despised and hated tax collector, the lowest of the low. As we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, a lot of folks don't like to read this because it strikes at their pride and I get so tickled at preachers who walk around trying to be important. They're more concerned about being seen with the president and uh, trying to be a, a, a boss and a uh, shot caller dressed in their expensive suits looking all pompous. I saw uh, someone the other night just posing in front of the cameras, all standing like a peacock, not realizing that in the Bible uh, these words are found. Not many wise men after the flesh. We don't like that in our flesh. Those of us who are saved, we want to think we're special and we're wise and smart. In most cases, that is not the case. I can take you from church to church to church. I have preached across this nation in so-called black churches, so-called white churches, so-called mixed churches, Hispanic churches, uh, all kinds of churches, and have preached around the world. And I can tell every, listen to me very carefully, I can take you from uh, I'm, I'm talking about Bible-believing churches, you will find uh, people who are just the common folk. Just common folk. Every, every now and then you'll have a businessman who's done well, an insurance agent who's done well, and so forth, and 
uh, one or two. Uh, every now and then, out of a thousand churches, you'll find one or two PhDs. And those kind of folks kind of gather together, and they grab back and look at each other, shake each other's hand. Yes, you're a PhD. I'm a PhD, too. And I'm a DD. Out of a big green called the DDs, the Doctor of Divinity, the dumb dogs. And people get all caught up in this stuff. But the Bible makes it very clear, not many wise men or not many smart men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble. That means really, really good men who think they're good and nobody's good are called. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty and base things of the world and things which are despised have God chosen. Yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in God's sight. Amen, somebody. No, 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 my friend. Uh, God created you from nothing. You have no room to glory. And to thank you all this and all that. Because you're nothing without God. I know that strikes at your wicked pride. But please hear me. You're nothing without God. And you can't do anything worthwhile without God. I know you don't like it. Because you're not dead yet. But once you get dead, you like it real good. Amen somebody. get dead get crucified and that won't bother you it is highly likely that you have felt despised rejected you have been acquainted with grief throughout your Christian life and felt insignificant at some time in your life but that is not how God feels about you and therefore, that's not how you should feel about yourself. Now, you should feel guilty because of your sins, and you should confess your sins. And when people rebuke you about your sins, you ought to confess them and repent and get your heart right with the Lord. You need to be humble and deal with that. You are very important to God. Otherwise, he would have never sent his son, Jesus Christ, out of obscurity to save the world, including you. Amen, somebody. You are very important to him, so important that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for your sins so that you can be with him forever and ever. One hymn writer expressed it this way. Jesus, my Savior, to Bethlehem came laid in a manger to sorrow and shame. Oh, it was wonderful, blessed be his name, seeking for me, seeking for me. Jesus, my Savior on Calvary's tree, paid the great debt and my soul he set free. Oh, it was wonderful, how could it be, dying for me, dying for me. Jesus, my Savior, the same as of old, while I was wandering in darkness and cold, gently and long did he plead with my soul, calling for me, calling for me. And beloved Jesus is calling for you today. Wherever you are in the world, people get saved all the time around here from sin and hell. It, it, tonight may be your night. Jesus came to earth. Out of obscurity, he came to save the world, including you. Shed his blood he is the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world, including your sins, including my sins. We all deserve to burn in hell forever. I repeat that, and I say that because you don't hear that much from pulpits today. You don't even hear it from evangelists anymore. But hell is a real place. 
and uh, you don't want to go there, and you don't have to go there because God so loved the world, that includes you, that he gave his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Are you ready? Are you willing right now? You feel God tugging at your heart to get saved tonight? Why don't you trust Christ as Savior and follow me in what we call the sinner's prayer? Holy Father God, I acknowledge that I am a wicked sinner and I have done some bad things in my life and I have broken your commandments. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of my sins. As I now believe with all of my heart in the Lord Jesus Christ for my salvation. I believe that he shed his blood on the cross for my sins. And he has taken away my sins. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my wretched soul. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. And help me to repent of my sins past and to change. And to follow you for the rest of my life. In Jesus Christ's name I pray and for his sake. Amen. Now, beloved, if you believed in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ and that he died on the cross for your sins, was buried and rose again, allow me to say congratulations on doing the most important thing in life, and that is trusting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, please go to gospelightsociety.com and read my pamphlet, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Dear friend, if you trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, please, uh, today, please email me at dw3 at gospellightsociety.com and let us know. We have some free material that we want to send you immediately. Evangeline will get that to you immediately. Uh, if you have a prayer request, please email that to us as well. And uh, Elizabeth will make sure that it is reported to me and we will begin praying uh, for you on a daily basis all day long, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And we'll pray for you until you tell us to stop. Uh, I know God answers prayer, these folks' prayer. Some people, they want us to pray for them until Jesus comes, I guess, because they never tell us to stop. Very few write in and say, praise the Lord, my prayers were answered. And what they do, many of them, they send in another prayer request. I don't say nothing about the last one, but since I guess it worked, God heard our prayers, they, they send in another one. And they keep on doing that, and that's okay. And we will pray for you. We count it a privilege to pray for you. You don't have to give us a dime to do that. It is our duty to do that. I think what Samuel said, he said, I will not sin against the, against the Lord by not praying for you. Until next time, beloved, God loves you, we love you, and may God bless you real good is our prayer.